Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to your special show all about the days of the hijjah, the days of virtue, inshallah ta'ala. We have with us our sheikh, exceptional sheikh, who is taking us through this journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As sheikh Mustafa Mahmoud. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Hisham, how are you? Alhamdulillah, doing really well. Jazakallah khairan and a pleasure to be with you, inshallah ta'ala. Actually, I'm... I'm more honored to have you, and Allah it's, it's been a lovely Allah journey having you Allah around. May Allah forgive us and grant us uh, tawfiq. Ameen, 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 Ya Rabbi. Ameen. Today is our final episode. We've gone through so much about Hajj and about Dhul Hijjah and about the 10 days and about Arafah. We have reached the day of the last stop of our journey, and that is the day of Eid, inshallah ta'ala. Sheikh, my first question to you, is Eid al-Adha a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Beautiful question. The answer is yes. Eid al-Adha is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you to imagine, when a servant works hard, what do they get in return? They mm -hmm. get a hadiyah, they get paid at the end of the month, and that's according to our worldly life, isn't it? How about with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How just is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's why Allah has made Eid al-Adha to be three days and not one day if compared to Eid al-Fitr. And Eid al-Adha, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which their servant, his servants, have literally done on these beautiful days. And not only that, because these days are the most magnificent days compared to any other days on earth, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to celebrate all the good actions that we did during those 10 days of the Hijjah. Very similar to the, uh, the, day, the, the Eid al-Fitr in terms of that on Eid al-Fitr, we also, you know, celebrate the, the days, the last 10 days of Ramadan and how we did in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Sah, Sayyidi. But I, I've heard that Eid al-Adha is slightly greater than Eid al-Fitr. Is that true, Sheikh? Oh, subhanAllah, Eid al-Adha is even greater than Eid al-Fitr. Mm. You know what's happening nowadays is that because in Ramadan we work hard, we fast for long hours, and we do salat at tarawih fil layl, kadalika salat al qiyam. وبعد ذلك نقوم بعبادات متنوعة الحمد لله we 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 do a lot of ibadat different type of ibadat on Ramadan and our iman is at its peak so when Eid al-Fitr reaches the Eid of Ramadan majority of us we celebrate that day with enthusiasm and we enjoy like extremely that Subhanallah some people they even get out of line a little bit because of how much Allah they've been Allah. they have that ishtiyaq inside them they they're waiting for that day. For, because of the beauty of that day and the amount of work that they've done. Now you notice Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, after fasting Ramadan, your reward is وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ So that you may glorify Allah. Listen to the word تُكَبِّر. تَكَبِّر is takbir. And we just mentioned previously in a hadith where Allah says that we have to increase in the number of doing what? At-tahleel, what-takbir, what-tahmeed. Isn't yes. it? But did he mention this on the days of Ramadan? لا. He just spoke about this on the days of? On the days of the Hijjah, خلاص. لكن he said that so that you may glorify Allah for that which He has guided you upon. ولا علكم تشكرون. So you might be among the grateful. Mm -hmm. But what makes Eid al-Adha to be greater than Eid al-Fitr? Yes. Remember that the Eid of Ramadan after after the Ramadan, we've only fulfilled one pillar. That's just one pillar, which is fasting. Yes. But in the days of the Hijjah. From day one to day ten, we get to fulfill all of the five pillars of Islam together. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani explains that the reason why these days are the most favored to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from among the many wisdoms behind it, you find that we have the capability to fulfill every single pillar of Islam, which no other day would grant us that favor at all. And not only that, in those days, we have Hajj on top of it, subhanAllah. And not just Hajj alone, we have it to be three days. It's because this is, first of all, this is from among the many reasons that it's the last month of the year, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him is most beloved compared to any other days to his eyes. And to add upon that as well, you notice that when people go to Hajj on these three days, on the day of Eid, they complete certain manasik of Hajj, and then they still have to do Jamarat on the, second, on the second day of Eid, the third day of Eid. Others even go to the fourth day of Eid. So we are literally living just like them. 
Remember when we explained that we can be similar to the people who went to Hajj? Yes. That's why Allah wants us to celebrate Eid for at least three days so that we can be similar to the people that went to Hajj if we are not Hujjaj ourselves. So what are the etiquettes of the day of Eid, Shaykh? What should we be doing? Yani, what should we be doing? There are so many things, subhanAllah, that we should be doing, but the main ones that one should not forget, especially for a person that desires to sacrifice or have a Qurbani mm -hmm. on that day, they must make sure from the time Dhul Hijjah begins, so let's say, for example, the moon has been sighted for Dhul Hijjah, and we know that we are going to wake up the next day and we have Dhul Hijjah in front of us day one, Make sure that you do not um, do any type of bodily cleansiness, which is taqlimul abafir, um, cutting off your nails, halqu um, shari, uh, maybe shaving your hair, and even more than that, things that ritually um, relate to your own body, like making yourself beautiful, cosmetics and all of that stuff. You stay away from those. The reason being is so that, remember when we mentioned the hadith in regards to people that go to Arafah, mm -hmm. they stand in front of Allah, they are there as if they are disheveled, they are full of dust on their skin, their hair is rough, and they're wearing the same clothes and part of their bodies are uncovered for the sake of Allah. Yeah. And they are standing in front of Allah, the Lili, so that at least on the day of Eid when it reads, we, we sacrifice our animals on that day and we are in the same position as Hujjah. Subhanallah. Allah. And then after doing that, that we make sure we don't uh, we don't do any type of bodily cleansiness. On the day of Nahar itself, we make sure as we slow as we um, sacrifice our animals and we fulfill the Qurbani, mm -hmm. what we try to do our level best is make sure that we do Samillah wala ta'kulu mimma lam yuzkarismullah alayh. Don't yeah. eat that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been mentioned. Make sure that you do mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that after you've literally sacrificed, you do not forget your neighbors, you do not forget your loved ones, for those who are poor from your own family, and make sure that you give out a lot of that meat for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not attain for, from any one of us the meat, nor the blood, nor anything that comes out and extracted is that which is extracted from the meat. But that which Allah wants from us and that which Allah gets from us is taqwa, consciousness of Him. And that's these are one of the means that we get to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are among the very few etiquettes one can follow. And then inshaAllah ta'ala have the rest of that day trying to live in a state of ibadah and never forget to do takbir and tahmeed and tahleel on those days because those are the days of chanting Allah's name and glorifying Allah and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so people carry on after salat, you know, I've seen many masajid after the, 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 uh, the prayer, people do tahmeed and tahleel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loudly as well. Aywa. The reason why they do that is because for those who are at Hajj, mm -hmm. they're still in, the, in a state of Hajj. Yes. Although they've took off the ihram and everything, they've done what is necessary. But as long as they're in a state of Hajj, they're still in Mina and they're in their tents and they're, they're fulfilling the, the remainder of the parts of Hajj and the manasik of Hajj, we are still escorting them through takbir and also the good deeds that we'll be doing. Because if we can't be there with them, let's escort them and be like them. Subhanallah, Shaykh. Yani, yani, although we're living wherever we are around the world, our hearts are with the people of Hajj. Aywa. Our hearts are with the Hujjaj in that we don't, you know, we don't, you know, cut our nails, we don't cut our hair, things like that. We slaughter at the same time as they do. We do so many actions that are related. We make takbir and tahleel just like that they do, Subhanallah, Shaykh. Aywa, Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar, Shaykh. Shaykh, we've reached the end of this beautiful, you know, uh, series. The days of virtue and uh, subhanallah you know many, many final comments final departing words about the 10 days of the hijjah inshallah ta'ala for our brothers and sisters and our viewers at home Allah it's quite it's quite amazing and also it's it's quite um quite it's quite sad actually which um it makes our emotions to be a bit heightened yeah if we understand the beauty of these days number one that the final remarks that i can give is all of us have to make sure that we revive this sunnah. It's a, forgive, it's a forgotten sunnah. Yes. That which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized on a lot. And especially on his last year before his death, he spoke about these beautiful days and their importance. And it's as if he knew that a time will come where the servants of Allah, which is especially in the 21st century, 
they would only go according to what their bodies literally respond to. Our bodies respond to Eid al-Fitr because of the hardship that we've went through on the month. But when Dhul Hijjah enters, nobody really sees the beauty of it because there is no hardship in these days. Especially the non-Hujjaj. Exactly. For the, especially for the non-Hujjaj, they don't really feel the hardship. But for those who go to Hajj, think about this. I believe you've gone to Hajj, Sheikh Hisham, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. When you finish your last Jamarah on that very first day after Nahar and everything else, how much tears come out of your eyes? How, how much tears pour on your, on your cheeks? Because you've just spent the night in Muzdalifa, you spent the day before in, in ah. Arafah, you've just done a Umrah a few days ago. So and your you, heart is... You can feel the acceptance of your Hajj, mm -hmm. subhanAllah. You feel it on that yes. day. Yes. Now, because we're there, we're experiencing the hardship, we notice that we are in a state of Hajj. But for those who are not in a state of Hajj, it is our duty to ensure that we revive this Sunnah. We bring it back to life, to show to people and the entire world also that we also have days that we cherish the most and Allah showers us with blessings upon blessings and mercy upon mercy because he wants goodness for us. Imagine days that you have forgiveness. Imagine days where you can worship Allah fully, fulfilling the main pillars of Islam. Imagine days where you can live as if you are connected to the Kaaba itself. Mm -hmm. Imagine days where you can literally amend every single relationship you have with Allah and your people around you and everyone else. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Shaykhana, it's been an amazing, amazing journey, mashallah, tabarakallah. We've gone through so much about these amazing days of Dhul Hijjah, uh, these days of virtue, subhanallah. And I'm sure our brothers and sisters at home, all of our audience have really appreciated the depth of information and knowledge that you have given us and the wisdom you've given us about these 10 days, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, Shaykhana, and accept it and put it in your scale of good deeds, inshallah ta'ala. And brothers and sisters at home, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reward you for joining us on this special, special show, The Days of Virtue, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bless you and grant you tawfiq. May Allah enable us to worship him in the best form during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Jazakumullah khairan for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.